What's going on, everybody? Today we've got a special episode with who? Who are you? I'm me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mayuko. <laughs> nice. I'm having Mayuko on the show uh, today to talk about some crucial soft skills uh, as a developer. I know you talk about soft skills a lot. Do My audience has heard me talk about it a lot. I think it's more important than the tech skills. Plus one. You can, you can teach tech skills. You can't teach somebody not to be an asshole yeah. for the most part. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Much harder to teach. <laughs> right, right. So that's what we're going to talk about today. It's not really like a top five list and like this is the order, but we are going to give five ideas and, you know, do with that what you will. Mm-hmm. Take it or leave them. All right, so you're the guest. You picked the first one. Okay. So the one that I chose is attitude. Basically, just being a good teammate and being a joy to work with. Because I don't know about you, but like I want to like the people that I work yeah, with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a weird fine line to like not only hire your friends, because yeah. that might be a bad thing, mm-hmm. but also... Yeah, you just, you work with these, I always say, like, you spend more time with these people than you do your family. You do. Yeah. 40 hours a week is a lot. Right. So when you're out there hunting for a job, like, I know sometimes it can be like, oh, just hire me. I'll take anything. But remember, you're interviewing that team as well. Yeah. To make sure, like, you're going to be a good fit. You're going to enjoy working every day. And the point we're trying to make here is, you know, you should be a good teammate. Uh, Be fun to be around. Just don't be an asshole. Like, it sounds simple, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's, and it's tough because it's all in like the little things, like just mm-hmm. the language that you use, um, the way that you treat other people, the way that you respect other people. Mm-hmm. Like it's just the, it, oh, I think everyone can pick up on how different people feel about certain things and how they communicate yeah, yeah. and just having, and just being the type of person that it's like, it's really easy to talk to. It's really easy to work with you. Um, always being a good listener is, is, I think, a big component of like just yeah. having a good attitude, um, which might be its own skill in and of itself. Could but we'll it's all out. about having a good <laughs> attitude. <laughs> all right, my turn. I want to talk about breaking down complex ideas. Because mm. um, this is, a, I think, one of the most important skills that an engineer can have. Because right, we deal with complex ideas. And I always say, like, if you're super knowledgeable, but you can't communicate that idea, Mm -hmm. it's almost, like, worthless. Yeah, there's no point. (laughs) No, I know. One common way that I found to do it, though, is with, like, analogies. Yeah. So something I've used in my videos that has resonated with a lot of people, like, explaining, like, the delegate and protocol pattern, Mm -hmm. or delegate Mm -hmm. protocol pattern. I always use, like, a boss and intern analogy. Mm -hmm. Like, the delegate is, like, the intern just waiting to be told what to do, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know the boss tells them what to do. And like a lot of people have, have resonated with that. And then another one, um, before you give your two cents, is the uh, structs versus classes, mm-hmm. like reference types and value types. Mm-hmm. I always say like a, uh, a class is like if we were working on a Google Sheet, mm-hmm. right? If you make a change to that, mm-hmm. it's going to affect mine as well. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. like if you're a struct, it's like kind of working in an Excel document and if I send you an Excel file through email, you can make all the changes you want. It's mm-hmm. not going to affect my file. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So being able to like, explain things in ways like that I have found is is super helpful yeah I'm like a really visual learner and so those kinds of analogies are super helpful and I found does resonate with other technical people but also non-technical people too right Um, one of my favorite analogies is around optionals I was here yeah around like when I actually I don't take credit for this by the way like someone else made it and (laughs) I just love it um but the the analogy being like when you look when you're looking at an optional type you're looking at a box Mm -hmm. you don't know if there's going to be something inside that box or nothing right. until you unwrap the optional. Yeah, yeah. And that helped me think way better about like what even is an optional. Yeah, yeah. You're just looking at a box. You don't and then you just inside. put a giant exclamation point on that box and just take it. Right? You just open it up and then <laughs> yeah. you're like, there's nothing in here. Yeah, in here. Crash, crash. Yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned communicating with like non-technical teammates. So this is a good segue. Um, can you expand on that like a little bit? Yeah. I think it's really important to software engineers to be able to talk to non-technical people because software engineers talking to software engineers, like I think there's a lot of vocabulary. Uh, there's a lot of vocabulary that we share. A lot of jargon. There is. There's like <laughs> jargon, there's keywords and stuff, but a lot of the time you have to communicate what you're building or your ideas to pro, uh, product managers, designers, mm-hmm. managers, people in completely different roles to give them an understanding of what you're doing. So I think that thing of being able to explain complex subjects into uh, easier ways is yeah. really directly paired with this. For sure. And I think it also affects the developer's life as well. Mm-hmm. And this is a very like personal situation with me at a small startup, being one of the only developers, is a lot of times the product manager or the CEO will like ask for a feature. Mm-hmm. And then I always kind of explain like every feature is like a spectrum of complexity. Mm-hmm. So like, like take chart for an example. If you want to add a chart to your app, it could just be a basic bar chart. Cool. Mm-hmm. Or that chart could be, yeah, you can scroll back 10 months. You can zoom in. It's going to show different things, right? That chart can get really, really complex. Mm-hmm. So that's how I break it down to non-tech people. I kind of explain that spectrum of complexity and say like, obviously the more complex takes more time. Mm-hmm. And this usually comes in with like, 
because I say no a lot to building new features, mm-hmm. right? And the CEO loves that about me. Mm-hmm. She's like, I love the fact that you like keep us in check and be like, no, this you're asking for way too much. Totally. So being able to break that down and saying like, here's why. I, I, I break it down to like being able to explain it like rationally and logically mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to them, make them understand it. And then also explaining trade-offs, I think is a big one. Because mm-hmm. as we know in programming, it's all about the trade-offs. So being able to explain the trade-offs of like, yeah, we can build this feature, but in order to have it out by launch day, we have to sacrifice this, this, and this if you want to add this feature. Mm-hmm. And I think I've had good luck explaining that to, to non-technical people. Yeah. I think a lot about it in terms of like what would happen in the reverse sense of like if a finance person were to talk to me about yeah. finance stuff and they only use jargon, I would be like, I don't know. <laughs> right, right. All I want to know is can I buy this new monitor or not and is it okay for the company? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just need a yes or no. <laughs> yeah. Just let me know based on your expertise that yeah. I don't need to know all the details whether this is right for me or not and I think that's what a lot of non-engineer people are looking for when they ask engineers about their opinion on stuff yeah and I think you mentioned a very good thing of put yourself in their shoes Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. trying to be empathetic and be like okay if somebody was explaining this to me and I don't know anything like I don't know try to flip the script a little bit I think yeah I feel like a product product manager was like build this feature and then you're like oh well like we have all these optionals here that are not implicitly unwrapped and then there's this difference between Swift 2 and Swift 3 like you're probably gonna lose them (laughs) right right yeah all right, so the next one we're going to talk about is work ethic. And I wanted to bring this up because I think this is the one that's free. And what I mean by free is that, like, anybody can do this, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. You know, being able to break down complex ideas, you have to, like, really understand. I always say you have to really understand something before you can, like, break it down. Mm-hmm. So you may not have that education, whatever, but when it comes to work ethic, there's no excuse, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. It's just how much you want to work. And I do want to clarify. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking work 13-hour days. I'm not talking, like, go crazy. What I mean is just... Be productive, like, while you're at work, mm-hmm. right? How many, you know, some teammates that, you know, sit on YouTube all day? Or maybe not all day, but maybe spend... I've known a couple in the past, yeah. <laughs> you? <laughs> Sometimes. I'm watching his videos. <laughs> right, right. No, but you know what I'm saying. Like, we all know, if you kind of uh, audited your day, mm-hmm. you know there's plenty of time that you're slacking off. Mm-hmm. Everybody does it, yep. right? So... I guess if you just capitalize on that, mm-hmm. and your teammates will notice that. They'll see that. They'll see how highly performant you are, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that really resonates with them. Yeah, it's really more about just, like, making an effort. Like, it doesn't matter, mm-hmm. yeah, like you said, the hours or what time you're working. It's really just, like, showing that you're really earnestly trying to mm-hmm. do a good job and bring value. Yeah. I think that's the really important part. And it's also kind of back to the teammate thing that we talked about. Have you had teammates where you could tell they didn't care about the job? Yeah. And, like, it was that... so hard to work yeah, with Yeah, that matters. Like, you yeah. have people that are just, like... Like, you know, go through the motions. I'm here nine to five, whatever. You know, I don't care what I do here. Mm -hmm. And then you have people that are actually passionate about their job and Mm -hmm. like enjoy working there. And those people are like 10 times better to work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's frustrating when like you're working with someone who doesn't see work in that same way too, because Mm -hmm. most of the time I'm just like, I just want to do a good job and I'm (laughs) here to do a good job. So help me. (laughs) All right. And the last one on the list. And again, this list is not comprehensive. Mm -hmm. There's just five we came up with real quick Mm -hmm. uh, is what? Is initiative. Um, initiative just being like taking the initiative and being proactive in doing stuff like you don't have to be a senior engineer you don't have to have years of experience like anybody can take initiative it's kind of like work ethic it's free yeah yeah it's really just the willingness to try something out and bring ideas and values to the team um, that they might not have had before so if you're especially if you're like a junior engineer taking the initiative to learn about existing technologies taking the initiative to learn about how existing things work those are all really important things to show that you really care about working there and wanting to learn and be a better engineer in person. And that's a good way to put it is it shows that you care. Mm -hmm. Like taking the initiative kind of shows that you care. So I agree with that. And then one example, you know, if you're a senior developer, you might have the power to just build something, right? That could be your initiative. Or if you're more junior and you just can't build something all willy-nilly in the project, you know, you can show initiative by saying, hey, I've been researching, you know, this technology, maybe SwiftLint, if you're familiar with linters out there, say, hey, I've been researching SwiftLint, I think it'd be good for our project, would you mind if I created my own branch and started implementing this and experimenting with it? Mm-hmm. 99% of the time, that senior engineer is going to be like, hell yeah, go for it, that's mm-hmm. awesome, they're going to be so appreciative and that you're showing the initiative, it shows that you care, mm-hmm. and yeah, they're going to love you for that, so initiative is huge. I think, and I think the secret is that no one knows what they're doing. <laughs> and as a software engineer, especially as you progress in your career, that's gonna it's gonna become more apparent that no mm-hmm. one's telling you what to do. Yeah, yeah. And so you have to figure out what you want to do, what you can do, and taking the initiative to do that. Uh, I think is just gonna have lots of 
um, benefits for you and the team. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point. Maybe a little bonus thing right here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> nobody knows. What, I mean, nobody people knows. know what they're doing, but your perception of how much they know mm-hmm. is probably way off from how much like they actually know. Yeah. I feel like things like Swift Lent, it's like it comes from just a random thought of just being like, hmm, I wish we could stop having arguments and PRs <laughs> right, yeah. about whether to have this or that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It yeah. Is, we put it in our project. It has saved us. So much time. Yeah. Because most of my comments on the PR was like, extra space here. Knit, <laughs> you know? Knit. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. All right. Yeah. And that's not a Swiftland advertisement, but <laughs> that's going to wrap up the five soft skills. Thank you, Mayuko, for coming on the show. Tell everybody where they can find you. We'll link it in the description as well. Yeah. Uh, so I have a YouTube channel. You can find me at Hello Mayuko. Um, you can also find me on Twitter, Instagram, also on Twitch. I stream as well yes. um, at Hello Mayuko as well. And also, we just filmed a fun little video, maybe or maybe not, using Legos. I'm not sure what actually happened Who knows? on her channel. We did have fun. <laughs> yeah, youtube.com slash hello, Mayuko. That's going to wrap it up for the video. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out, and we'll see you in the next one.